second of October Lead Code Challenge. I I know I'm pretty late today. I got occupied with lots of work at home. I'll talk about it in some other video, but let's right now focus our attention onto today's question. The problem that we have in is number of dice rolls with target sum. This question is a medium level question on lead code. However, I don't feel the same because we have solved plenty of such questions in the past based on the concept of dynamic programming. If you are new to it, don't worry, I'm there to help you out. Even before jumping onto the details of the algorithm, how to solve this problem up, let's try and understand the question now. So I'll be explaining the question as well as the algorithm by the presentation. So let's quickly hop onto the question and let's try and understand it up. The question says you're given n dices. Here you're given three dices and each dice has k faces. The dice that I have shown just right now in the figure has six faces in it. That means the value will range from one, two, three, four, five, six. What do you need to do? You need to count the number of possible ways to achieve the target sum t using n k face dices. So you are rolling dices, you are going to roll them n times and whatever value or outcomes com comes, you need to add those up and that should be equal to the value of target given to you in the question. If you have understood the question appropriately, then 70% of the solution is already derived. If you have understood these equations, then you, your work is almost done. So let's try and represent our thoughts in form of equations. Let's assume you are new to dynamic programming. So I'll talk about how a new person will approach this problem. So he'll create a helper method and what all parameters will be part of this helper method. The first value is k that represents how many faces does each dice has. So the dice has k faces, therefore we have passed k as a parameter. The next one is how many turns of dice rolling are left. Since to begin with, we have the value of n specified in the equation, we'll pass that over here. So this represents how many dice rolling turns are still left. The last parameter that we have represents the target value that we are looking for, which is represented by t. Moving ahead, I have created a variable total ways, which will actually store the answer. And the next part is really interesting and really simple. So what are the possibilities or outcomes of each dice rolling? The face value can vary from one and go up till the value of k. So these are the possibilities of outcomes corresponding to a single dice roll. And what would be the impact on total base of this for loop? So let's try and understand it up. Total base would be equal to total base plus you pass in the same recursive call and here the parameters would change. How would these change? The value of k would remain constant because the possibilities of each dice outcome remains the same. The number of dice rolls get reduced by one because you have consumed one dice roll opportunity and the last target value also gets reduced by the face value that came as the outcome of the current dice roll. This is all, this is it. In the end, you simply re return total ways as your answer. And this is it guys. This is really simple, typical way of writing the recursive, recursive solution for this problem. And if I, you, if you contest that this is going to take hell lot of time, what you can bring in, you can bring in memoization. What I'm trying to say, let's quickly move on to the coding section and conclude it up. For now, let's focus our attention onto this private helper method that I have created, which is actually acting as my solution method. So I check if my value of n is less than zero or the target value goes less than zero. What do I do? I simply return back zero. So these are few corner cases that I have written. The next statement is if my value of n is zero and my target is also zero, that means I have attained one possibility of answer. I simply return one over here. And the next statement at line number 15, let's forget it for some time. Let's proceed to line number 16. I have created a variable total ways. I have written the same for loop here. I represents the face value for I equals to one. I is less than equal to K I plus plus. If my I is less than or equal to target, this is another constraint that I have added so as to avoid values going lower than zero. What do I do? I update my total ways to total ways plus DFS of n minus one, the value of k remains the same and target minus i. This is really important. If you are able to derive this equation, your work is done.
and as per the question we have to perform modulus operation so th th this is what i have written over here once i'm out of this for loop i simply return back total ways to it now comes the concern this is going to be highly time consuming so what do we do we, to optimize this approach we bring in memoization and in order to have the memoization support built in we have created a 2d array wherein uh, this is represented by dp and the parameters vary from n plus 1 target plus 1 you fill in the entire dp array with minus 1 values and you pass it over here if you have already identified the solution for dp of target comma n comma target in the past that means its value is not set to minus 1 what do you do you simply return it from here itself you don't recalculate the same values again and again and once you have identified the total waves you set it to dp of n comma target so let's try and submit this up accepted this is the new ui of lead code i am also getting used to it personally i don't like it much with this let's wrap up today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did then please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye